Welcome to United Network News, the official news channel for CARE, the Center for Amity and Restoration of Earth. I'm Sunny Galt. At UNN, you get the real news. Through our field messengers, we show you the truth about what's really taking place in our communities. We also bring you stories to help you remember who you are and why you're here, as well as regional stories that impact the people. And our World Situation Report reveals what's happening throughout the multiverse. We are here to restore Earth. In the U.S., it is Monday, May 20th, 2024. We're headed to eastern Uganda to learn more about Airtel, a popular technology company allowing locals to easily pay their bills and make transfers using just their mobile phones. And in Alberta, Canada, we've got boots on the ground as a local fire gets closer and residents are forced to evacuate. Ready to communicate with our galactic friends? We've got some tips on how to call a UFO. Severe floods hit parts of Europe, creating hazardous conditions and rescue operations. And a comet lights up the skies in Spain and Portugal, capturing the attention of many. This is Kaylin Gipp, messenger for United Network News. Here's a look at today's field messenger reports from all around the world. In Uganda, small businesses assist mobile owners to buy Airtel money. This allows users to easily pay bills, transfer funds, and buy airtime. UNN field messenger Diane shows us how this works. Hi, field messenger Diane. Here in eastern Uganda, Ginger City. I'm sitting with Bridget and she is an agent for Airtel. Bridget, can you explain to me what is Airtel? Uh, Airtel is a mobile money whereby we send and receive the money and the person needs to come with the phone and also my phone to send the money and receive the money. So we don't have to go to the bank. You can take care of putting phones on our mobiles and we can spend it from there. Is that what you're telling me? So, um, yeah, as my friend has said, like, we don't need to go to the bank. We just need to go to the mobile agent and the person deposit the money or give you airtime. Yeah. Just something simple. Yeah, yeah airtime is a good... Um, thank you for leading into that. Airtime, buying data, buying voice so that we can ring someone or sending an SMS package. So you would help people with that. So I understand too, with the airtime money, we can pay our bills. Is that right? Of course. It's FFRs. You can pay the bills. Instead of going to the bank, I want to pay electricity. I want to pay school fees. I want to pay rent. You can use your mobile phone to go and buy electricity, buy water, uh, pay school fees for your children, something good. And do you enjoy being an agent for Airtel? <laughs> Tell me your experience. Of course, I enjoy the, to be a mobile agent whereby, um, for example, uh, it's not tiresome and also it favors me like I can go get friends via like exchange of the money. We also being paid like as me, a mobile agent also I'm paid monthly doing that work on air too. Bridget, want to thank you so much for taking the time and helping the world understand airtime money here in Eastern Uganda. Thank you so much for hosting me. I'm so happy and may God bless you so much. A fast moving wildfire is getting closer to Fort McMurray in Alberta, Canada, and the locals are being evacuated. UNN field messenger Steve in on the scene with a live update. Steve McGrath, Fort McMurray, Alberta. Breaking news, under uh, alert fire evacuation. Here's what the sky looks like for all those outside. It's close, 16 kilometers southwest of town. Here is the area that is uh, currently where the fire is, southwest of uh, the town, more or less. It's around 10,000 hectares. I don't know how many acres that is, I think 30,000. And uh, it's uh, 
lots of uh, big cloud smokes and uh, a little bit of ash falling, but not too serious yet. And of course, up the north, beautiful. It's spreading right now to the east because the winds are from the west, southwest. So it's going towards the 63 there on the highway. It's kind of heading that way, but the smoke and whatnot is, is making it into town. And people are really edgy. There's lots of lineups at the gas pumps because we all been through this before, 2016. Have a good day. And remember, be the change you want to see. We want you to become a UNN field messenger. These are everyday people just like you who want to make a difference in their community. You don't need any special training or equipment. Just use the camera on your mobile phone and show us what's happening in your area. You send us your videos and our production team will create the report for you. Our new website is now up and running at unitednetwork.earth. You can submit your Field Messenger reports directly through the Field Messenger tab at the top of the page. You can also email your reports to our new email address at fieldmessenger at unitednetwork.earth. Hey, I'm Kirsten from Switzerland. This is Wayne from Tucson. Hi, my name is Desmond from Ghana. I am Claudia from Dawsonville, Georgia. I'm Mikey from Pretoria, South Africa. Hi, I'm Steve McGrath, Fort McMurray, Alberta, Canada. People from all around the world are coming together. Happy day, beautiful world. We are here in a rather small urban garden, and this video is just to show you the joys that we've had in this garden with electric gardening. When news happens in their area, they show us what's really going on. We have people in the streets protesting for and against. At United Network News, our field messengers are changing the face of news. This is Field Messenger Helen reporting with Nature, and I'm going to talk to you about the bees again. Take the next step in restoring our planet. Become a UNN Field Messenger today. Hi, I'm Stephanie from South Africa. If it's going to be, it's up to me. If it's going to be, it's up to me. 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 It's up to all of us. We're UNN, and we're taking back the news. More and more humans are starting to realize that we're not alone. There are other beings on this planet, this galaxy, this universe, and beyond. And although first contact has yet to happen globally, there are still ways we can communicate with our galactic friends. Zen Kakaro from LightNet helps people worldwide remember their amazing superhuman skills through online workshops and experiences. And today we're learning how to call a UFO. Well, Zenka, I am excited about today's conversation. We are talking about how to call a UFO, ET phone home. No, just kidding. <laughs> but a lot of people have questions about this because we all love this idea that we're not the only ones out there and we want to talk with benevolent ETs, right? And we want this to happen sooner than later. So how does this work? Do you guys, you guys teach us as part of LightNet? You guys get together in groups and teach how to call a UFO? Yeah, we do. And it's just like spoon bending. You know, you open your mind, you get in a group of people who are also doing the same thing. And before you know it, you realize that you already have all the skills that you need to do this. And it's a lot yeah. of fun. So calling UFO, you know, it's funny, we're here in Sedona, but we do it around the world. In Sedona, you can even go on a UFO tour, and they will guarantee that you will see a UFO. So something about the <laughs> magnetics here are very apt uh, for, for UFO, um, watching UFOs. So one of the things that you probably wanna do is you wanna start doing this. Um, a lot of times you go out uh, in the new moon because there's you know less uh, light out, so it's easier to see. And you wanna go out right at sundown. So that's where you're gonna see a lot of things in that first hour, hour and a half. I also mm -hmm. like to go out late, late, late. So maybe three in the morning or something as well. One of the things you wanna do is I always like to take a star app. So we're gonna share that app here uh, and star walk to, I think it's called, where you can actually see what stars you're looking. And I want you to see what is the star that you see the first when you, when you open up. Now that'll give you some clues as to where you're connected. You can also look at your, we teach people how to look at their astrology chart of what stars were active, star nations were active when they were born. But mm -hmm. anyway, it's good to have that 
that. So you know, um, so you start becoming familiar with the sky, right? You also right. want to have a satellite tracker app and that's going to show you like, oh, you think you see a UFO, but it's actually a satellite, right? There's more mm. and more satellites out today that are, that are doing that. One of the things you want to look for is unusual patterns. And one of which is what we call a power up, which is a flash. So you'll see uh, what looks like a star go boom, back and it can do it multiple times, et cetera. And it's good to keep a, a little journal with you um, when, when you do this and you can see where it was in the sky or just what happened, right? One of the also things you wanna do is you wanna raise your vibration as much as you can. And you can do this by listening to uh, Schumann Resonance or a song that you love or just opening your heart. Some people just sing out loud. So again, it's just being in that state. And we also use gratitude as, as, as a hack. And we do that in spoon bending too, because you know, part of your, you know, your frontal cortex, your rational mind really doesn't want this to happen. It's not comfortable with it. It doesn't know what's going to happen to your life if this happens. You know, the, all sorts yeah. of stuff that is getting in the way. Uh, you know, we know that, um, you know, when you when you say I'm I'm grateful for something, it's an automatic clue for your body to relax because you can't be in gratitude and fear at the same time, really. You know what I mean? So yeah. you want to you want to be in that mode of gratitude. If you're with other open minded people, that can also help. So being in a group of people can also help. But you can just do it with you and your kid or just you or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and we use sophisticated techniques as well. So uh, at LightNet, which we, we're open to teaching anyone how to do, and I'll talk about a few of them now. So we use radio contact. Uh, we have a segment on that on your mm -hmm. show, uh, Sunny, um, where we teach you how to set it to 144 and you turn it on. And this can be a great communication device where they're gonna actually use um, beeps or other communication to, to, to communicate with you. The other thing we do is we send our coordinates to them. And this is a technique that a lot of people use where they imagine themselves leaving their location, their city, and going out to a particular star system and guiding ships to go to you at your system. So it's like almost like you're connecting and then asking them to reconnect to you and, sh and show them where you are. Um, I don't know that I don't usually do that, but I just want to mention that because that's a very popular way to do this. So one of the things we do, which we learned from Jimmy Blanchett, who's a major researcher in this field, is that we would take pictures with our message, like, hey, if it's safe and appropriate, we'd like to see your ships tonight. And this is our latitude and longitude. And this is when we're going out. And we take that picture and we convert it into sound. And then we play it over our radios to them. And you can probably just play it to them in general. You don't necessarily have to have a radio to do this. Uh, and then you go out at that time and you relax and you enjoy and you wait for it. And one of the things you also might want to try is selecting a star or a light in the sky that you feel drawn to and asking it to move in a certain pattern. So you can yeah. say, please move in a circle, please move in a triangle, please move in a square and watch for it and see what happens. It's delightful. I have that happen to me all the time. So I don't know if it's a San Diego thing. That's that's where I'm at. But I can go out pretty much any night and I'll just stare at a star and it'll have those rapid movements that we were just talking about, like up, down to the side. I've never seen one just fly through the sky like at a normal pace. It's always like a squirrel. It's like up, down, like wherever. And then a lot of times I'll say, can you move? You know, if you can hear me, move to the right. If you, you know, my right or whatever. And, and it happens. It really does. And so, yeah, I, I've so seen fun. it happen firsthand. So fun. So fun. Yeah. Yeah. A rural cooperative in northern New Mexico has reached a new milestone, 10 years in the making, managing to achieve 100% renewable energy for its daytime electricity use. Unlike other investor-owned utilities, which are controlled by shareholders, rural distribution co-ops answer to the households and businesses that use energy in their local area. Cooperatives work best on a local level as they're often much closer to understanding their customers' needs because they are the same as the owner's needs.
Rural energy production plants like this one offer multiple benefits for the locals, including increased employment opportunities and pollution reduction in that area. Rural co-ops demonstrate the power of community involvement in achieving common goals, setting a precedent for others to follow all across the world. In many parts of the world, using water to flush our waste has become a common practice. This seemingly convenient solution has hidden consequences that make it not only environmentally unsustainable, but also harmful to human health on many levels. The impacts of flush toilets come down to four main factors, water use, energy use, paper use, and ecological pollution from wastewater that ends up back in the environment. A sustainable alternative is the use of a compost toilet, which uses the natural process of decomposition to break down human waste into a rich fertilizer. This fertilizer can then be used for gardening or agriculture, completing the cycle of nutrients returning to the earth. This embodies the principle of regenerative agriculture by enabling the production of food from our own waste. Unlike flush toilets, compost toilets do not use any water. They also save energy by eliminating the need for wastewater treatment plants, which consume a significant amount of energy to operate. Diaper-free or elimination communication is a practice that involves parents and caregivers responding to a baby's elimination needs without the use of diapers. Instead, parents learn to recognize their baby's cues and signals for when they need to use the bathroom and help them eliminate in an appropriate place. This has been practiced in various cultures for centuries. As in many parts of the world, babies are diaper-free and potty trained by the time they reach six months of age. This practice is gaining popularity in Western cultures as parents become more environmentally conscious and seek alternative methods to diapering. This practice offers multiple benefits beyond being eco-friendly. It enhances early bonding, improves communication, increases awareness of a baby's needs, reduces diaper rash, and helps babies recognize their bathroom cues. Many families choose to use a combination of no diapers and traditional diapers for convenience. We are United Network News. Every day we release real stories from real people all over the world. Hill Messenger reporting from Gold Coast, Australia. Denmark. Canada. Uganda. From Atlanta in Southern California. In their own words, people like you share what's really happening in their area. At UNN, you are the news. You are creating a new world with infinite possibilities. You are the restoration plan. Come join us for the real news every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday only on United Network. We're UNN, and we're taking back the news. Heavy rainfall and storms have caused severe flooding in northern Italy, France, and Germany, while southern Italy faces an unusual heat wave. In northern Italy, heavy storms and rainfall resulted in extensive flooding, with emergency services actively rescuing residents. The storms have created hazardous conditions, including gusts of wind strong enough to overturn a freight train. Meanwhile, southern Italy is experiencing a heat wave, leading to water scarcity and agricultural issues. France is on high alert for thunderstorms, with several departments experiencing nearly 10,000 lightning strikes and continuous intense rainfall lasting 24 hours, causing significant disruption. In Western Germany, relentless rain has led to flooding and landslides, prompting evacuations. Authorities have described the situation as widespread flooding, with the state capital and surrounding regions particularly impacted. Britain will spend more than 10 billion pounds or $12.7 billion compensating thousands affected by contaminated blood in the 1970s and 1980s. 
This is seen as one of the worst treatment disasters in the National Health Service's history, impacting an estimated 30,000 individuals with around 3,000 deaths. Many more live with the consequences, and some victims remain untraced. Imported blood from the U.S. used for transfusions and hemophilia treatments led to infections with HIV and hepatitis C. The prime minister is expected to issue an official apology, followed by a government compensation package announcement. An upcoming inquiry report will address whether the use of contaminated treatments should have ceased sooner and if there were attempts to cover up the issue. The UK has seen more than 6,000 bank branches shut down in the past nine years, with Barclays leading the closures. Recent data highlights the impact of local communities, especially those reliant on face-to-face -face banking services. The closures have been justified by banks due to a shift toward online and mobile banking. However, the abrupt disappearance of branches is problematic for many particularly the elderly and those without internet access. The call is growing for a commitment to develop 200 banking hubs post-election to ensure accessible alternatives. So far, 50 hubs have opened, aiming for 100 by year end. Currently, some tasks still needing visiting a branch, forcing long journeys for those affected. A tent city that popped up in Dublin, Ireland has now been cleared. Now, the tents were located around the International Protection Office where asylum applications are processed. Young men live there without proper facilities, relying on streets for washing and cooking and bike docks to charge phones. On May 1st, Irish authorities cleared this camp, moving 285 men to emergency shelters However, new camps keep emerging and being cleared. Protests have erupted with some chanting that Ireland is full and there have been arson attacks on planned refugee shelters. A poll shows 63% of people want stricter immigration rules. The UK's new deportation law has also affected Ireland, increasing asylum applications as migrants look for a safer place. Ireland is struggling to manage, with the Dublin government seeking ways to send migrants back to the UK, highlighting issues in the 2020 UK-Ireland Migrant Agreement. A comet fragment lit up the skies over Spain and Portugal on Saturday night, capturing the attention of many residents. The European Space Agency shared a video of the stunning meteor, which later was identified by them, as a small piece of a comet. Flying at 45 kilometers or 28 miles per second, it burned up over the Atlantic. Videos of the event went viral, showing the object illuminating the night sky in bright blue and green hues, displaying a very creative display there, bright in the sky. Many people in both countries contacted emergency services to report this unusual sighting. The people of Buenos Aires, Argentina are experiencing a significant jump in subway fares rising 360% since Friday. This dramatic hike is part of the austerity measures implemented by Argentina's current president. Many were frustrated by the more than tripled cost of a single ride. The fare increase is part of a broader initiative to cut public spending and regain economic stability amid high inflation and recession. However, these measures have worsened inflation now at 289% annually and have strained everyday life for many Argentines. This is the third inflation-driven fare hike this year with further increases scheduled in the coming months. The city subway has seen little improvement in service despite rising prices. A recent report reveals banks in Australia are failing to adequ adequately support customers facing financial hardship. Although regulations mandate lenders assist those unable to meet their payments, many have been ignoring hardship notices, leaving customers in distress. This practice, reminiscent of past criticisms during the Banking Royal Commission, 
show banks are not meeting community expectations. The hardship process is crucial both for customers who may avoid selling their homes and for banks, which can restore loan performance. Despite the availability of tools to aid customers, the variability in assistance and limited support duration, often just three months, highlights significant gaps. The report points out the importance of consistent long-term support for financially distressed customers. Also in Australia, the federal government plans to introduce a one-click switch initiative to help energy customers save on their bills. The plan aims to prevent costly automatic rollovers by making it simple for consumers to switch to cheaper plans. The Australian Competition and Consumer Commission found a quarter of consumers pay more than necessary, sometimes up to $400 annually. The government's new measure intends to ease these costs and simplify switching plans. The budget also includes a $300 energy bill rebate and further cost of living support. Implementing these changes requires state level cooperation and a rapid investigation to streamline the one click switch. An implementation plan will be presented to energy ministers in July. Illegal rosewood trade between Mozambique and China continues despite restrictions under CITES, an international treaty aimed at protecting endangered species. The logs are often misreported or undeclared in customs paperwork, with major shippers claiming compliance with laws, but relying on customers to declare cargo content. Mozambique is losing vast forest areas daily with rosewood now being the most trafficked wildlife product globally, surpassing even ivory and rhino horn. The rosewood trade thrives partly due to insufficient enforcement of international agreements and rampant corruption, especially in conflict-torn areas. The local population is deeply affected with more than a million people displaced by ongoing insurgent violence. This instability further complicates the efforts to protect the environment and the community. The African Union has imposed a 15-year ban on the commercial slaughter of donkeys for their skin. Donkeys are a crucial asset for about 158 million people, particularly in rural areas where they are used for transportation, agriculture, and carrying water. The ban follows alarming reports that around 5.9 million donkeys are killed annually to meet China's demand for traditional medicine. This trade has heavily burdened African women and children who were forced to take on the hard labor previously performed by donkeys. Although the trade is illegal in countries like Kenya and Ethiopia, weak border enforcement has allowed it to continue. Implementing the ban will require robust regulations and international cooperation to address illegal trading routes and adapt to evolving criminal activities. Japan's parliament has passed a revision to the civil code, allowing divorced parents the option of joint child custody by 2026, aligning with many other countries. This is the first change to custody rights in nearly 80 years, and parents can now choose either dual or single custody. The current law grants custody to only one parent, usually the mother. The revision aims to support the increasing number of divorces and instances where fathers wish to stay connected with their children. It mandates that non-custodial parents share child rearing costs, addressing the financial challenges faced by many divorced mothers. The legislation was modified to address concerns from rights groups and victims of domestic violence, ensuring custody decisions are not biased. The review of the new system is planned five years after implementation. Millions of people living in Indonesia's remote islands are gaining internet access with the launch of Starlink satellite internet service. The launch event took place at a public health clinic in Bali's provincial capital. 
This new service will be trialed in New Santara, it's the upcoming capital in the island of Borneo, and it could be available across Indonesia. Current internet providers in the region rely on base stations that fail to cover remote areas, leaving many without internet access. The satellite service aims to bring high-speed internet to these regions, particularly aiding the health, education, and maritime sectors. Other Southeast Asian island nations like the Philippines and Malaysia already offer the service. Chinese social media platforms are cracking down on post flaunting personal wealth and financial extravagance. Social media platforms have recently removed posts showcasing luxury cars and expensive properties, as well as those boasting about the freedom that comes with being rich. This effort is part of a campaign to create a civilized, healthy, and harmonious online environment, so they say. Platforms reported the removal of thousands of messages and accounts during this latest effort. Authorities aim to close the growing income gap in China, where the wealth disparity between the rich and poor has expanded. Despite these measures, data shows a significant increase in wealth held by the top 10% of the population. Offline, policies continue to enforce behavior deemed acceptable, including new laws against harmful comments and symbols and campaigns to reduce food waste and reform wedding practices. The number of digital nomads globally has surged with the U.S. seeing a significant rise during the pandemic. Countries like Estonia, Barbados, and Costa Rica have rolled out digital nomad visas to attract remote workers, including salaried employees. Tax experts suggest these visas appeal to countries with aging populations seeking to entice skilled workers who contribute to the labor market and economy. However, the rising cost of digital nomads brings complex tax challenges. Remote workers can trigger tax liabilities in multiple jurisdictions, potentially affecting both employees and employers. Small emerging markets with favorable tax rates and remote work capabilities stand to benefit most from this trend. Growth in remote working has slowed recently with U.S. digital nomad numbers increasing by just 2% last year, amidst a push for a return to office-based work. The Justice Department in the U.S. has proposed reclassifying marijuana as a Schedule III drug, significantly shifting the U.S. drug policy. The new classification, which acknowledges the medicinal uses of cannabis, would remove marijuana from its status as a Schedule I drug alongside heroin and LSD. The change pending public comment and Drug Enforcement Administration approval aims to address long-time inequities in drug policy. Advocates argue this reclassification could reduce the tax burden on marijuana businesses and make clinical research more accessible, reflecting the evolving acceptance of cannabis in society. Critics caution the decision is politically motivated and lacks sufficient scientific backing. Many people with past convictions for simple possession could see their records cleared, potentially improving their job prospects and social opportunities. Electric vehicle or EV owners are finding their cars can significantly impact their driving experience, sometimes causing motion sickness. Research suggests the smooth and quiet acceleration of EVs, unlike combustion engines, can lead to motion sickness, especially during rapid accelerations or sudden stops. Automakers are addressing this by introducing features such as fake engine noises, synthetic gearing to mimic traditional gasoline vehicles, and flexible regenerative braking modes. Experts suggest EV newcomers use eco mode to ease throttle sensitivity and replicate familiar gasoline driving dynamics. By understanding and adjusting to EV specific features, drivers can minimize motion sickness, ultimately enhancing their comfort and control. Tired of being programmed? 
At United Network, you'll discover the truth about what's really happening on our planet. Get instant access to our written news, UNN newscasts, world situation reports, and in-depth stories from our field messengers. Manifest your amazing abilities as we explore the new Earth, plus original series to inspire and encourage you throughout your day. Get connected through United Chat, our personal chat room where you can join the conversation, share your experience, and also submit your questions for Kim. Watch United Network at home or on the go through your computer, favorite online streaming program, or mobile apps. Welcome to United Network News. Start your free trial today. UnitedNetwork.Earth, bringing people together. And now, the World Situation Report with Kimberly Gogan from the Office of the Guardian. The Palavicini family has made some grand plans for world domination, which began at the end of last week. The split is 65% ownership of planet Earth, with 35% going to the Order of the Dragon. The death of the Iranian president was all a setup to transfer control of Iran from the Chinese to the Palavicini family. All this and more as we check in with Kim for today's World Situation Report. Now here's Kimberly Gogan with the Office of the Guardian. Hey, Kim. Good Monday morning. I had to remember what day it is. <laughs> How are you, Miss Sunny? I'm good. Had a good weekend. Got out with the family. Went and checked out some animals in nature. And I don't know, just kind of had a relaxing time. I always feel bad saying that because I know you didn't have that kind of a weekend. But I'm sure we're going to get updated on. There, there'll come a day when I have that kind of a weekend. Yeah. <laughs> no, I had some meetings over the weekend. Um, they started on Friday, as you know. And not really ready to talk about them yet. Let's just say they were about care and moving forward and that kind of thing. So all positive things. Okay. Uh, like I said, you know, for us, don't get me wrong, we do need to know what's going on in the world right now um, mm -hmm. so that we can make changes in our lives if necessary. Uh, and also to dispel any kind of fear and rumors and those kind of things. But my my focus and my attention has been on moving things forward and being 100 percent prepared to move them forward in, in very short order. OK, but that doesn't mean we don't have crazy people doing crazy things. There's all kinds of rumors going around. So so let's just kind of set those rumors straight and and tell you what's going on. Uh, so, all right, uh, let's start with uh, something that is on everyone's lips right now. Uh, it's circulating throughout the Patriot communities, Q communities, about what's going on in Iran right now. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, uh, I'm sure you've heard, unless you've been hiding in nature all weekend, that there was uh, a... A, an alleged helicopter cra uh, crash, uh, which killed the Iranian president and some members of his staff. Yeah. Uh, what is to come in the near future, this is according to mainstream news, is that Khomeini, uh, which is the imam of the Shias and in charge of the Shias, is that he is going to select an interim president uh, that will serve for 50 days uh, until an election can be had to select another president. And I, of course, everywhere is a selection, and Iran is no exception. Right. But uh, let me tell you about this uh, alleged helicopter crash. Now, during the time of the alleged crash, they said the weather was bad, therefore they couldn't actually locate the helicopter. Mm -hmm. They tried to locate the helicopter allegedly by air, uh, and then when they were unsuccessful due to fog and bad weather, which there was some bad weather, um, then they had uh, tried to locate it up by ground uh, and sent some ambulances to where they believed the crash occurred. Now, this was so haphazard you know, whoever was running this show, uh, clearly it's their first day because first they could find them, then they couldn't find them. And then so-and-so was on board and then they're not on board. And we're not sure who's on board and who's on first, what's on second. And it was this game they played, you know, for several days over the weekend or a couple of days over the weekend, I should say. 
And finally, they made a decision that they found the plane and that the president had passed away uh, within the last several hours. I mean, it's been within the last 24 hours they made this decision. Right. Now, the uh, president of Iran is not dead. Uh, neither are his staff. Uh, they were located this morning in Belize. Uh, and I'm sure they're enjoying the weather and the beaches there. It's beautiful there if you haven't been to Belize. Mm -hmm. uh, and awaiting further instructions. They'll probably get a new life and all that comes with it, just like they did with Hitler and other folks. Yeah. But there's a reason behind this all happening now. Okay. So we have also talked about the fact that Khamenei, and Iran has been heavily controlled by the Order of the Dragon. Matter of fact, the head of the Order of the Green Dragon is actually Khamenei. So he's been kind of put in charge over a lot of the affairs on behalf of the Rothschilds Order of the Dragon and Chinese Order of the Dragon uh, for quite some time now. Now, we did talk about the fact that the real Khamenei is dead. We've talked about it several times, but that, you know, Iran is uh, no um, different than the U.S., where we just walk heads of state around with a mask on and call it a day. Uh, he has tripped up a few times with other heads of state in the region, not being able to confirm events that have happened in the past between heads of state privately, like whether it be a fishing trip or some other type of uh, event that did not happen in the news that took place uh, privately, mm -hmm. uh, which is no surprise uh, yeah. that, you know, not all masked men know all the answers to all the questions. Uh, and the president also was on board with this plan. Now, for the last uh, couple of years, Iran and China have built a very strong relationship due to the fact that there was a plan, as you know, uh, to transfer the world's power center over to China or to BRICS or, or whatever they called it and uh, to crash and burn the United States. Okay. So under this uh, plan, uh, China had full control, or the Li family of China, the Order of the Dragon, Golden Dragon, had full control over the country of Iran. Uh, and all of the sanctions you see in the fight between Israel and Iran is just one hand fighting with the other hand to achieve an ultimate outcome of control over the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Well... China has been going through a lot of problems lately. Uh, they do not have the money to complete this plan successfully. Uh, they have, uh, they are basically full on bankrupt. And therefore, there was a little deal made within the last several days. And the deal that was made was that China would receive $5.5 trillion for the Order of the Dragon to give up control over Iran. Hmm. And this is what the operatives came up with. So first, it was supposed to be the president, which, done. Mm -hmm. uh, the next allocated payment is allegedly due on Friday to China to give up full control. So if this had actually happened or does actually happen, which it won't because these people are crazy, um, then China would receive $5.5 trillion and that would get them out of debt and get them back into at least stable, a stable state. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then Khamenei would be the next to die and there would be another person put in control as the imam of the Shias. Okay. Well, the parties putting this forward is a group known as, and we've talked about them before, the Palavicini family, or whatever's left of them. The guy that's currently running it is fairly young. I don't even know if this guy's 40 years old. If so, then he's right about 40. And for the families, that's a pretty young age, which means that somebody got all excited with themselves being a member of this family and decided it's time for them to now take over and step up. So here's the deal that they made. And this is 
really bad. So they did get a hold of um, with China. Um, they they ordered the Order of the Black Dragon to find the old Meiwa system keys to Omega. Mm -hmm. Now she had. Uh, been given by probably Satan himself or somebody down there, uh, Lilith, somebody, in, um, uh, these master keys, which would then allow her to control a lot of different systems. And as Omega pretty much has faded away, it gave very limited control and limited access to things uh, in order for them, the Pallavicini, uh family to then try to take back control over all world systems. Mm -hmm. But they didn't know that. Now, over the course of the last several days, uh, they have made $75.42 trillion in promises to various countries. That's a lot of money around the world. Wow. Now, that would include Russia, South Africa, and we'll talk about why here in just a few moments. The only country that was not slated to get any money is the United States. However, $56 billion was promised to Langley Five U.S. operatives and some other SSP people, including the Q crew and the Trump operatives to allow the United States to burn to the oh ground. Oh, yes. Now, if you do happen to follow the Q crew, you'll notice that they mentioned 24 hours before it happened, they put out there, Iran is out, Egypt is in, with some weird coded messages like they normally do, and then this happens the following day which tells me that the Q crew and the Trump operatives and Team Trump agreed to take the money. Wow. There's, there's your white hats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awfully white. Yes, yeah. they are. Not, not, not so much so. Maybe like a color of caca brown or something <laughs> yeah. um, is what I'm thinking. And and so, uh, you know, they were all proud of themselves that this happened over there, you know, and of course, in defense of Israel and all of this, but um, allowing the U.S. to just burn into the ground so that it could be rebuilt up, of course, with themselves at the helm. And their egos are so large, they believe that they are the chosen ones, remember, mm -hmm. so uh, that they would love to be in charge of the United States you know, the management crew of the United States, because we all know governments don't actually run countries. You know, it's always done behind the scenes. So the deal that was made between, <clears throat> on a higher level, between the Pallavicini family and the Order of the Dragon was the Pallavicini family in exchange for the codes, uh, the Maywa codes, uh, and, of course, them executing on a long overdue plan, which was put forth by Marduk, uh, that they would be 65 percent owners of planet Earth. And I know lofty goals, you know, for a weekend. You know, what are you doing on Saturday? Well, I'm trying to take 65 percent control of planet Earth. And, you know, hey, by the way, uh, yeah. And 35% control would go to the Order of the Dragon, so they were not excluded, which is why China probably got some money. There was, I'm sure there was money promised to the UK and a few other uh, places while they go through this global restructuring. Mm -hmm. Now, that is a check the Pallavincini family will never be able to cash in this lifetime or the next one. They'll never fulfill that promise of $75.42 trillion or euro, whichever country, you know, they're dispersing money to, because I know that because they'll never get enough financial control to be able to issue anything ever. So um, now let's talk about the plan you know, what they were planning on doing, because this is important for the entire world to hear on how flawed of a model this actually is. So Marduk developed a plan uh, to take over the world, which Marduk already ran the world, but this is for the little humans, you know, to maintain control. 
And on the surface, it actually sounds like somewhat of a good idea because it's a more, um, there wouldn't be one power center of Earth. That there would be seven. Yeah, we've talked about uh, that. And, mm -hmm. and I've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. So uh, there would be seven uh, Bank for International Settlements around the world. There would be seven World Trade Organizations, IMF, um, you know, uh, United Nations. Uh, so there would be seven different locations in the world where these organizations would exist, of course, under one umbrella, which would have then been controlled 65% by the Palavicini families et al. and 35% by the Order of the Dragon. Now, originally, it was going to be all the Order of the Dragon because it's more... It's more than just a financial separation. Uh, it would be also military control, intelligence control, you know, of the planet. Now, do they have the ability to execute on this plan? Well, no, because they believe that <clears throat> since Marduk implemented this plan or gave the orders years ago for this plan to happen, that he would have installed some kind of backup system to make it happen. But that is not the case. So for the last couple of days, they've been running around with Marduk's old keys that he left behind. Uh, he, they've been running around with Maywa keys and trying to access every single system they could possibly access, which is good for us because these, all, all these things needed to go. You know, anything that hadn't been activated in a long time, you know, because the people or the non-people have not been here, uh, is now all coming to the surface and we're seeing, you know, the stuff so we can clear it out of the way. So it works out good for us. But the locations in the world that were going to control um, various parts of the world were, of course, uh, namely China. China would control all from India on east. Uh, and it would be like the entire Asian sector. Uh, Russia would be in charge of all of Europe, Eastern and Western Europe. Uh, these are the promises. Uh, the entire African continent would be controlled by South Africa, and the entire South American continent would be controlled by Brazil. Uh, now, as far as the United States is concerned, uh, the entire North American continent would belong to the United States. You know, in order to achieve this task, based on the fact that all commodities are traded in U.S. dollars and these types of things, there would have to be a huge crash that would take place first in order to implement different currencies. Yeah. So in the Middle East, they have promised varying countries varying degrees of control. Uh, in the beginning, it was actually going to be the uh, Gulf uh, – it's the GCC, so um, – and with Saudi Arabia at the helm. Uh, then it was promised to Iraq when they started issuing the uh, new Iraqi dinar and the revaluation uh, to control all of the Middle East. Uh, and now it appears that that place is going to be Iran. Uh, if you do not know, uh, the former Shah of Iran uh, was actually a Palavicini. So, yeah, so they're talking. There's actually some chatter about that. Maybe they just want to install a new Shah. Uh, kind of take the religion out of it because, you know, maybe install Satan as their, you know, whatever, you know, who knows. But, uh, yes, so that is the chatter uh, now at the moment. So they, they haven't really kind of found anyone to control the Middle East, but they prefer to be Iran. So that's why you're seeing all this turmoil there now. Uh, and then, of course, the United Kingdom over the Commonwealth nations and, you know, as they currently are or they think they are um, and the monarchy system. So of which they would then uh, Chucky would die of cancer or whatever he's ailing from these days. And then William uh, would be installed as the new head of the region, even though he doesn't want it, because we've talked about that before. He doesn't want to have anything to do with that. Uh, it doesn't matter what he wants. It matters what they want. Uh, they would like to have that. So um, either that or they'll just kill him and replace him with a masked person. They're no, they have no shame. Yeah. 
So seven different currencies would then be the base currencies for the world, and those base currencies would then control the entire planet Earth, backed by a centralized currency, namely either the IMF SDR, or they would uh, choose gold if they had any access to it, or one of these types of things. This is this was the plan that has been around for at least, that I am aware of, seven decades. Okay. This was where they were planning on going. Uh, and so that is actually the reason why we saw what we saw in Iran, which was the beginning of the execution on the plan. Now, as far as the Q crew and the Trump humpers and all those people, they believe that they are going to be the controlling party over the North American faction of the plan. Uh, that was what was offered to them, that they would be the managers, not the owners, of course, because, the you know, that's already been divided up. But they would make a lot of money as power brokers for that region, the North American continent of planet Earth. Yeah. Pretty lofty goals there. <laughs> but you said they don't have the money to be able to do this. So what was the game plan? They have to know they don't have the funds to fulfill well, the Best I can tell is uh, they managed to weasel out of the Order of the Dragon Marduk Master Keys, which the Order of the Dragon already knew didn't work. But, you know, of course, they didn't tell them that when they got were getting their negotiating for their 35 percent. Of course. And then, of course, they managed to go find the Maywa Old Keys, which both of them had to do with Omega Control, although Marduk had some limited, they believed, control over Alpha as well. But remember, his only access was through the parents and the two blonde twins we call Cassandra. It wasn't him. It was them. And they're gone now. So those keys were never going to work for Alpha anyway. But like I said, limited knowledge is dangerous, and that this is of no surprise to me. So they have been running around. I have literally been up since 10 minutes to 1 <laughs> last night. I slept for a couple hours but um, because they have been going like gangbusters, and it started yesterday or last night. Now, the reason why they started last night, and I know you're in a total state of shock, but there is a full moon coming up in three days, three days before. They always start something new. I have no idea if the flower moon means anything to these people. Who knows? But they believe that the world becomes ripe for global domination sometime within a full moon. Uh, and that would be the end of a system and then therefore the installation of a new system. Mm -hmm. uh, they're even talking about a banking crash and, and stock market crashes around the world in order to effectuate a change. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I understand, you know, wanting to divide the financial system into seven sectors you know, um, based on continents and all of that, because it's a number that they could still control. Seven currencies, you know, to control the entire world. And then, of course, you would have managers of each country like we have now uh, in each subsector of the seven sectors. And, and, you know, it's the same thing that was promised to whatever the heck is playing the part of Putin these days. And he's going to be the hero of all of Europe. And, and he's great with that, you know. And this is actually, I, I remember Marduk having this conversation with Putin way back in 2013, 2014. That's how long I, I have personally been aware of this plan. Yeah. Uh, and he was going to be the savior of all of Europe. Uh, I, I distinctly remember this. Um, we were having an argument over Rusland is what the argument was. And, and they agreed to dump me off in Germany and, and have me run a part of the Western sector over there. And I'm like, I don't even want to run anything. I mean, I'm, I'm confused as to why. But, you know, you got to throw your hat in the ring to see what they would say. Yeah. But still, you know, they would want me want me controlled. So. Anyway, I, I, I'm aware of the plan. Um, I'm aware that Marduk never put out a plan he did not have the final key to. And just because these people think that they have his key doesn't mean they have his plan as well. So 
Again, another flawed model. We might see some more disruptions over the next couple of days uh, as they go through all of their keys and discover that none of them work. And and eternally grateful for that, Pallavicini family. Thank you so much for helping me find the last few things I couldn't find out there. So uh, you're saving me a ton of time uh, in making sure that humanity takes over the world themselves and you just are out. So short meetings, you know, and not short. It was quite, uh, you know, lengthy over a couple of days. But, you know, I... Um, still managed to do my job. You know, they didn't think I'd be able to have meetings with people and work at the same time. Again, you are wrong. I can do many things all at the same time and still, you know, still manage to, you know, um, make sure that you will fail. So when so this the bill, moment, Kim, hmm? the, you know, I don't know how much money it would be worth, but the from the Pallavicini family, when is that, is there a next payment that's due sometime soon to keep this plan of theirs running? That's right. The new payment date uh, for $75.42 trillion is on Friday. This Friday. Okay. Yes. Coincidentally, as you know, if you are Islamic or uh, Muslim, then you know that Friday is a non-working day. Saturday is a non-working day, Friday night to Saturday uh, in their world. That's kind of like, you know, we all, you know, most Christian people is Sunday, okay, you yeah. know, work on Sunday, there's a Saturday. So um, I don't, I, I'm sure that is why they picked that day. I am sure of it. Is it some special day, you know, in the Muslim world? I don't know. I don't think so. I think the next next special day is sometime in June, um, but <clears throat> nonetheless, uh, this is kind of what's been going on over the weekend. On our side of it, uh, we have made a lot of progress uh, because uh, we've actually managed to take tier one bank operating systems and and merge those operating systems with the global repository operating systems uh, over the weekend. So this is a positive move. While we were waiting for them to make their next one, we decided to you know, continue our, our move forward. Right. So what that means is, is that uh, customer accounts um, that are in banks worldwide are now falling underneath the repository. So we've been working for the last 24 hours on uh, tier two, tier three, tier four uh, banks, making sure that we have the same exact operating system. So when we transfer money out of the repository now, it's not a transfer from the repository per se, it's from the repository in the subsector of the bank in which the account is actually located. So if you bank, for example, at Wells Fargo, it will show you know, your project name you know, a company name, XYZ uh, Inc., and then it will show Global Repository Wells Fargo oh, account. Okay. okay. So we're now making our master accounts in uh, different banks around the world for ease of transfer. It's taken our time of transfer down from like 20 to 40 minutes-ish. You know, sometimes it's gone up to an hour when they've been pushing to block us, but now we're starting to hit the customer section. I mean, we, we still have a few little problems in the customer section uh, that we're sorting out because it has more to do with internet and compliance and other things, but um, it's taken it down to like approximately 10 minutes to make it all the way through the system, which is huge, uh, which yeah. tells me that we are doing well. Um, uh, and, like I said, I, I see things progressing uh, faster and faster, and this is good because it appears that everything else is going to come along at the same time. Hence the meetings with the care, you know, some people and stuff like that this weekend to kind of get our ducks in a row so that we would be able to move forward quickly because these people are doing a bang up job on helping us. So if you happen to run into any members of the Pallavicini family, you need to thank them. You know, thank them for their service to humanity. Mm. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They're horrible people. But anyway, um, yeah, I mean, they, 
So one of the first programs they got a hold of, and I might as well tell you about it, one of the first programs they got a hold of was this um, uh, program that could manipulate uh, dark matter, dark energy, these types of things, but it could also alter the fabric of reality. Mm. So some of the things that of people, and they targeted specific people, I believe, last night, um, you know, some symptoms and stuff that they were experiencing were pretty bad. I mean, it hit like every nerve in their body and amplified it. So like even a wind would hurt. Wow. Um, oh yeah, they're lovely folks. So um, we now have uh, have that. Uh, they don't have any access to that anymore. So, you know, it's kind of turned off and, and that kind of thing. But I'd sure... You know, I've got a key intelligence and military system too, folks. And actually, I I, I actually have uh, footage of them in the key intelligence and military system, to where um, I can actually identify them all now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. So. So what what do you, is like the general mood out there right now, Kim? Because you keep taking away their systems. Are they yeah. frustrated? Are they hopeful that this other plan? With the Paladin C. They're going the distance, Sonny. They're going the distance, you know. Uh, they are um, working really, really hard in this final battle. They don't consider it a battle. They consider it they have new shoes and they're going to take them out for a spin. Um, yeah. But honestly, you know, no. I don't think it's going to... Uh, go real well for them, but they'll probably exhaust themselves within the next couple of days, you know, 24, 48 hours. But until then, you know, or there's nothing left. Yeah. Um, but we'll see, you know, uh, they have tried so far hacking, um, uh, controlling command, uh, which didn't go well for them. They tried hacking the master, uh, backdoor, well, it's not backdoor, but master base platform system for all international financial transfers mm -hmm. worldwide. Uh, there is also a network out there where, um, you know, we have internet and we pay for internet services, but there is a peer to peer thing that's appeared. It's, it begins with a G. I think it's called grape or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, to where people have been selling their, a bandwidth they have not used mm -hmm. uh, to a second user. I'm not sure in totality how it works, but there was some money in there. They tried to get a hold of that. Um, you know, mainly for them, they've been attacking anything that has any kind of what they believe money in it, like in in mass. I mean, seventy four five trillion dollars is a is a is a large bill. Yes, so, oh yeah, and they've got uh, four and a half days to do it. So. Wow. Yeah. So by Friday, you know, you can probably stick a fork in these people, but they will stay alive as long as they are still locating additional things that need to go away. Mm -hmm. um, additional control systems. Once they've located the last control system, they will all be dead. Yeah. 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 So... Sorry to say, but that's what's going to happen. Along with their uh, deep state uh, order of the dragon partners. Yeah. You know, sometimes you just got to leave the carrot out there long enough. And it, and it took us a couple of days to locate everybody involved in this fantastic plan. Uh, but remember, no Marduk, no final key, no plan, no change of currencies. No. So, but, you know. God bless the operatives, too, that took the $56 billion in payouts. You know? What horrible people. Honest to God. Like, so egotistical. I, I, I can't even fathom that whole thing. Being like, yeah, you know, just crash the whole country. It's fine as long as we get to rule it when it comes back on whatever level it comes back. I mean, who are these You people? know, the thing that irritates me the most is there are a lot of good people uh, in the U.S. that are true patriots. You know, they truly love the country, that kind of thing. 
And um, there are patriots all over the world that love their respective countries, yeah. you know, but, but here in the U.S., you know, they've got quite a crew of people that are really counting on turning the country around, you know, making it all happen. Some of these folks that took this money get on alternative media and they talk like they're patriots and Trump yeah. is coming back and all that kind of stuff. And the Q crew, be patriots, be patriots. We told you this was going to happen in Iran, all this kind of stuff. But in reality, you're just bad people. You're ducking. You're ducking kidding me, right? You're duckers. <laughs> you have become duckers. Duck dynasty people, duck, duckers. That's who you are. Yeah. And and you, the, just the misleading of the people, you know, giving them hope where there is no hope, you know, yeah. and it's not, and, and, and well, meanwhile, behind everybody's back, you're sitting there agreeing to burn the United States to the ground in yeah. short order by next month. That's their plan. And I don't know why June 13th is a special day for these people, but it really is. They Don't they call it the Juneteenth or something now? Is that the 13th? June, I think that's the 16th. Oh, the 16th. Okay. Well, I don't know why they like June 13th so much, but they do. I, I Remember, I, if you've been following me for a long time, you, it used to be the day that they thought that I would concede would be June 13th. And therefore, they would, you know, I would go through – I call it two weeks of hell week, you know, like you have in, in um, fraternities and that kind of stuff, because yeah. it was just everything that could go wrong would go wrong for two weeks. Now I haven't had that in the last year or so, maybe they're incapable at this point. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, everything would just go wrong. And um, it really didn't make a difference. Maybe they gave up. It's been uh, since I think uh, they started uh, the two weeks uh, for me, um, program back in 2012. So probably after 10 years of doing it, maybe they just gave up. <laughs> they probably don't, don't even know why June 13th. They read it somewhere. They don't even know it might be related to you. They're like, oh, let's pick this date. Why not? Probably not. But do you remember, um, I think you were here at that time when they were having this whole conversation once around that time and they put their flags down. Remember everybody said, put your flags down, put your flags down. And they panicked. Uh, it was because they found out that the date that people saw in looking glass was actually June 13th, 2012 that I would have conceded. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. Whoopsie. <laughs> We've got to look at the year. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh. Well, and it's become apparent, too, over the last couple of days that, um, you know, I remember I've, I've talked a lot about the fact if I drop one dollar, that means they lost. Yeah. Well, they had actually when you get down to the level of people that are still existing and breathing and walking this planet right now, they told them that according to Project Looking Glass that I never would. This is the second lie about me, mm -hmm. because just like they lied about June 13th. They're also lying about the drop a dollar because they knew I would eventually do it. They just didn't want them to stop running like chickens yeah. um, with their heads cut off. I mean, is what they, they look like to me. So um, that's the second lie. And we will prove that that is the case. Right. And the clock is ticking. Right. But, um, you know, this has actually proven to be a bonus for us because it just takes out more people that could do us harm in the future, especially as it relates to um, infrastructure and development in the Middle East area. Um, these people would never let that happen. Uh, their buddies and their pals uh, who are working with them on this plan, the Orosinis, would be in control of the United States. So, um, you know, the anti-silent circle or whatever you call them are still on the war path. Uh, but, you know, and I know people are going to say, well, I thought they were gone. Well, yeah, now we're dealing with a bunch of 30 to 40 year olds, uh, which would be abnormal for families to have someone of that age in control. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. You know, most of these people are at least two to three decades older, you know, by the time you get into a seat of control. So they're just going down the line. And, and you know, the male ego is a tough thing. And I'm sorry to say, it's not that I'm against men. I love men. Don't get me wrong. Um, but 
you know, it's an ego and it's not even male ego because I see just as many females with the same issue, I should say. But the ego is a terrible thing. And and these people grew up with a silver spoon in their mouth, uh, being promised great power as they grow up. And that's what they think they're going to do. Yeah. So. Yep. I highly doubt that that is going to be the case. No, no, but it's like they can't see any other outcome. Like you said, that's ingrained in their brain. This is how they were brought up, you know, no other alternative, you know? Yep. Well, God bless them because they need it. (laughs) May God bless them the way they've blessed others. (laughs) And I hope the Iranian president is enjoying his Bailey's vacation. Uh, If you guys don't know, Belize is one of the uh, most beautiful places in the world for diving. I've I've dove in Belize before. Yeah, it's beautiful. Have you? I have. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, very beautiful. Yeah. Uh, So uh, maybe they'll do a little diving or something, (laughs) you know. Any other suggestions you have for the Iranian president in Belize? Uh, What you could do? Things to do in Belize, Sunny, since you went there diving? Oh, it was a long time ago, but it's just so frustrating that they just keep lying to the public over and over again. I mean, you know, they've always done it. We're just more aware of the lies now, but it's so, it's so, oh, it makes me so mad that they keep doing this, you know, and then there's people, you know, just believe whatever's on their TV. You know, the moment I saw that helicopter crash, I'm like, he wasn't in that. No way. Give me a break. I know. You know. But at least you now have that. Your eyes are wide open. And and yeah. so are most of the people that are watching this. Your eyes are wide open. You want to know what really is going on. So now you know. But it's kind of like any other relationship you would have, whether it's a friendship or even a family member or, you know, a love relationship. If that person is continuously lying to you, are you going to continue to listen? Are you going to stay in that relationship? You know, are you or are you going to walk away? And, you know, I think it's time for people and I know it's hard. Right. But, you know, it's time for people just decide to walk away and they will once there is something else that actually doesn't lie, that actually follows through on everything they say they're going to do. Uh, You know, and that your word is the only thing these people can't take away from you. Mm -hmm. And they've given theirs up a hundred times over in my book, you know, from watching, watching everything they're doing. So I'm sure uh, they're having a uh, hack rama while I'm here doing the news, but, and actually I'm not sure I'm a hundred percent sure they are. That's what they're doing right now. Mm -hmm. So I might have a little bit of a mess to clean up, but that's okay. Yeah. God bless them. I know. Well, I guess we'll leave you to it. (laughs) I know. (laughs) We're going to do one of those swap things, you know, like all those movies like Freaky Friday and all that. Um, We're going to do one of those for a weekend once in a while. And I'll go hang out with your kids. We'll go to the park and walk in nature. And you can do this all weekend. I need instructions, though, on what to do. Because I'd be like, I don't want to touch anything. I'm going to mess something up. I need details. (laughs) I'd probably be doing the same thing with their kids. I'd probably be like, okay, Kim, keep the kids alive. Sonny's going to kill you if she (laughs) makes a mistake. (laughs) What do I do? It's been a while. I'll probably try to feed them things they'll never eat. They'll probably be like, my mom doesn't make me eat that. (laughs) Oh, my God. That would be funny. (laughs) They'll probably run away from me. No, I'm just kidding. My daughter will vouch for me. I have a reference. You're okay. That's good. That's good. (laughs) All right, Sunny. Well, That's the World Situation Report for today. Hopefully, we'll have some more news as this progresses over the next 48 hours. And all good things are happening on our side of it. Not concerned about it at all. It's just another lie. And hopefully, they won't kill anybody in the process. They seem to be very focused on uh, quantum AI systems. So that's good. All right. Well, we will see you back here on Wednesday then. Sounds great. Okay. Want to share news from UNN? Help us change the face of social media and use it for good. Connect with us through our online channels. Our social media team creates clips from each newscast you can easily share with people you care about. 
That's also where you'll find our UNN Meme of the Day, a great way to encourage critical thinking. Links to all our social media sites are available at the bottom of our website at unitednetwork.earth. Let's change the face of news together. That wraps up today's news update. Please share UNN with your friends and family. We need everyone to come together and help restore our planet. When news happens in your area, record and share it with us so together we can help you share it with the world. Remember, if it's going to be, it's up to me. I'm Sunny Galt. Join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for the real news.